the county ordinance to regulate short-term vacation rentals has gone into effect and the application process to apply for a permit is now available and we're going to talk about all that up next. Hey what's going on friends Dylan Onaka here with the Bible Island video blog and the process to apply for a non-conforming use permit and a permit to operate a short-term vacation rental is now in effect so we're going to talk about that give you a quick update on that process and go through it it's a pretty long process so just so we can get through any misunderstandings or misconceptions the first thing you got to think about is whether or not you have to get a permit to operate there is a misunderstanding that everybody who does vacation rentals has to apply and that's not the case if you do a hosted rental where you live on the property or in the home this this ordinance doesn't apply to you so you don't have to worry about it you can disregard it right off the top if you are doing a hosted rental this is only for unhosted rentals where the entire property is rented to a renter so if that is your situation and you're renting your entire property uh, on a short-term vacation rental basis then you gotta look at what your zoning is so if you're in one of the permitted zoning districts and there'll be a link down below to the website that shows that you can look that up then you do have to apply for a permit but it's not a non-conforming use permit you can apply for that permit at any time there is no deadline and then operate your property as a short-term vacation rental if you are not in a zoned district that allows for vacation rentals then you will have to apply for a non-conforming use permit but you're only able to do that if you have already been in operation prior to April 1st of this year. So if you haven't been in operation, you will not be able to apply for a permit at all going forward. You will not be able to operate as a short-term vacation rental. And then furthermore, if you are on agricultural land, if it was subdivided after 1976 when the state land use code went into effect, you will under no circumstance be able to vacation rent. So if you are on agriculturally zoned land, you need to look up and that's something we can help you do. I have a contact at the county that will help do that. Look up when your subdivision was made and if it was prior to 76, then you can apply for a non-conforming use permit. If it was after 76, unfortunately you're out of luck. There can be no more rentals on that property under any circumstance. So you have to go through and figure all of that out. And then if you do need to apply for a permit, figure out whether it's a non-conforming use certificate or if it is uh, just a regular permit to operate a short-term vacation rental and so once you do that and you need to apply for the permit we're going to go through here uh, there's a 13 step process that you got to go through in order to apply and so it's not simple but uh, they've made it pretty step by step and then the county application is pretty uh, detailed and helpful and pointing you in the right direction so the first thing you got to do is complete the short-term vacation rental registration form pretty simple the second one is a landowner authorization if if applicable which is if someone else is is uh, completing this on your on the landowner's behalf uh, number three is a five hundred dollar non-refundable filing and processing fee so you have to pay 500 bucks to the county for them to look at your application whether or not they grant you that that certificate uh, to operate in the future number four is final approvals from the building division so you have to have all of your permitting final on your property so you can't have any unpermitted areas or open permits on your property and you have to provide proof of that for the building department number five is uh, current tax licenses so you have to show that you have a get license and a tat license the transient accommodations tax license basically to show that you're going to be paying your taxes number six is you have to have a uh, county of hawaii real property tax clearance certificate which basically shows that you are up to date on your on your county property taxes Number seven is a site plan. So it specifies on 11 by 17 piece of paper, the layout of your property. Um, there's some discussion about what exactly that means and you may wanna consult with the county uh, to make sure you're turning in the right thing and it has the details that they're looking for, but there is a detailed list of what they're looking for on the site plan. And then number eight is a floor plan. So a floor plan of your property and the areas that are rented and that also has some specifications on the county website and the application as to what they're looking for detail wise on the floor plan um, then you have to do a notarized affidavit of compliance so basically something saying that you swear to adhere to the uh, regulations and the and the rules of of this ordinance if you're granted a permit you have to then number 10 is a pre-existing short for pre-existing short-term vacation rentals you have to provide 
some type of proof that you were in existence prior to April 1st of this year it can be tax documentation or other things and the, count, the, the application specifies that. Number 11 is a list of affected uh, property owners and lessees within 300 feet of your property and there's actually a tool on the county website which will allow you to put in your address and then it will identify which properties are affected in that 300 foot radius and then allow you to actually export all of the addresses because you then need to do number 12 which is notify all of those affected residences that you will be applying for this permit and maybe granted the permit so you have to fill out a notification letter which the application has a a sample of that that you basically just fill in and that has to be mailed to the affected property owners and then number 13 is you have to provide proof that you've actually done that um, can be uh, return receipts from the post office something like that that shows that you actually did serve your affected residences around your property with that notification so that is the 13 step process as fast as you can possibly do it obviously there's a lot more that goes into it and uh, if you have any questions about it I'll have the link to the website down below in the application, but if I can help, please reach out. Um, definitely one of the, the, the most complicated things to do or, or you know, least accessible things to do is find out when exactly your subdivision was subdivided. So if that's a simple thing that, that we can just shoot an email out to the county and get an answer on, let us know if we can help with that. But that's the update. You gotta start doing this. If you are in a area where you need a non-conforming use permit, you're not in a, a properly zoned area for vacation rentals, the deadline is September 28th, so you have to get this process going, you, know, you have to do these mailings, there's a lot that needs to happen here, and best to do it all sooner rather than later, so if there's any issues or it gets kicked back, you can, you can work on those things. So get started on that process if you wanna continue your short-term vacation rental, and if you are in a zone district, you don't have to worry as much on the timeline, but if you in the future ever want to use your property, your condo as a short-term vacation rental, you would need to go through this process. So as always, let me know if you guys got any questions and I'll see you guys next week, aloha.